Don't get too excited, folks. Are the seats too comfortable? All right. Time to get our next speakers up. Uh, super pumped that these fine peeps said yes when we put out the call. Uh, I think we're all fans of Buck worldwide, but especially now Buck Sydney and the beautiful work they're pumping out. So, you know, for these fine gentlemen that have come across from New Zealand and uh, worked internationally and now made Sydney their home, uh, get your hands out and put them together for the Buck Boys, Gareth and Lucas. How could we not come? Yeah. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much, James and Kim and in, anyone else behind Node. I've been excited about this for, for a while now. Um, I think it's really great and it's, uh, it's, it's really cool to be involved. So I'm Gareth, this is Lucas, and we work at Buck. So we opened the studio in Sydney two years ago, um, and in that time we've grown from myself to 12 people. And so we thought it'd be cool to divide our talk into 12 topics. They're short and sweet, but nuggets of gold. And number one is an intro. So who is Buck and who are we? So Buck's a design and animation studio. We've got offices in LA, New York, and now Sydney. And Lucas and I are both New Zealanders. This is me with my sheep. <laughs> and this is me in the rugby team. <laughs> uh, second from the right at the bottom. Hiratonga College. So I'm a Kiwi. Uh, Lucas and I, though, we, we first met at university, at, Mass at uh, Massey University, at Design School. And I was the yeah, yeah, head of Lucas. Um, and after that, I went to a place called Craft House Films in Wellington. Soon after that, Jerry, who won the Ident Prize, joined me. And then shortly after that, Lucas walked through the door. And we had a really fun couple of years uh, working together in Wellington. After that, I set sail and went to New York to work at Buck. And they just opened the New York office, and so when I got there, there was just four of us. And I really got to grow with the company. Um, I started off as an animator. I soon became an animation director as we got a little bit bigger. But what I really loved and was passionate about was design, but I just wasn't very good at it. And so it took years and years and years of just practice and practice and learning from the people around me to get better at design. Eventually I started designing, I became an art director, and when I left I was an associate creative director and I was leading jobs, I was designing and I was animating. Meanwhile, the government had gone on to Lucas, they'd found out he didn't have a sheep, he didn't play rugby, so after failing the hucker test at the airport, he got booted out. So. Luckily, um, the kind people at Giant Ant in Canada took him under their belt and he spent two years there doing really similar stuff to what I was doing at that time. Um, so nine years after working together in Wellington, we were reunited in Sydney. And we've, I've got a little showreel of the work that we've been involved in since uh, in that time. One, two, three. <laughs> Okay, so slide number two. So number two, the slide's gonna be about the two of us. So there's two of us up here. He's a creative director, I'm an art director, but I'm sure some of you are wondering what the hell is the difference? Uh, it's a little confusing. So Gareth and I put our heads together and we made this snazzy little list, which will hopefully explain what we do and how our roles at Buck are uh, different from each other. So Gareth is, uh, he's too busy to design, while I'm too busy with design to be able to do anything else. He takes many, many conference calls. I try and avoid as many as possible. He's in his office, uh, and I'm in the pit with the other designers and animators. 
Uh, he assesses job opportunities. I pitch on those job opportunities. He hovers over people's shoulders. I too hover over people's shoulders. He's more concerned with the big picture of a project while I focus in on the smaller details. Uh, he's across all of the jobs in the office while I'm just across maybe one or two at most. Uh, he builds a team, I lead that team. And he plants little seeds of ideas while I grow that seed into a plant. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that Gareth does a lot of is interact with the other two Buck offices uh, in New York and LA, and he's going to talk more about that right now. Nice segue there. So number three, one, two, three offices. So LA, New York, and Sydney. So these are all, you know, they're all different. Um, and we, we opened LA first in 2003, and that's had a little growth spurt recently. They're now at a massive 75 people. Um, New York um, is about half that size. We opened New York in 2006, did around 30 people. So we opened in 2015 in Sydney, and so at 12 people, we're quite a bit smaller than the other offices. And I think we'll stay smaller. Um, you know, the way we've built the other offices, we've just kind of built it on demand, so kind of organically. Um, and so I think we'll be smaller simply because the market's smaller down here. And we, for the most part, work on our own projects. So each office just works on their own projects. But we have collaborated from time to time, and we do use each other. And how we use each other um, is very similar to how you would use a freelancer, the most pimped out freelancer in the world. It's really, you know, even if, even if we don't use them all the time, it's, it's very, I've, I've found it very comforting over the last couple of years just to know that they're, they're there. Because there's a lot of, there's, a, there's a, obviously a huge amount of resources that we can tap into if we want to. Um, and they also use us, you know, we'll, we'll let them know when we're not busy. Here's an example of that. This is a frame that Lucas designed for the David Blaine title sequence that was made out of the New York office. So, you know, we obviously deal with, with time difference um, and it can be both really, really handy and it can be a real pain in the butt. Uh, what, what's cool about it is you can brief someone and then go to bed and you wake up and in your inbox is something amazing. Uh, the, the tricky part of it is that it, it come, you have to be really good at planning and communicating what you want. It's quite easy to lose eight hours if you, if you communicate the wrong thing or brief someone in the wrong way. So the crossover between us and New York is zero to two hours and with LA it's three to five. So it's a little bit easier working with LA. And that depends on the time of year. Um, the, the way that we work together for the most part is using Slack. Um, and we have both job specific channels, but we also, also have social channels. Uh, what I love about that is it means that even though we're down here in, in Australia, all the way at the other, end, uh, other side of the world, we're staying virtually connected with the Buck Massive, right? So we're, we're tapping into all of those resources uh, whenever we want to. Um, and so while it's satisfy satisfying to have that and to use them, I also find it extremely satisfying not to use them. Um, you know, it's, really, it's been really cool seeing our little team kind of thrive and, and start to gain momentum. And we've really hit the ground running, I think, this year, with, and we've done some great work, especially on this project that Lucas is about to walk you through. Okay, so <clears throat> fourth slide. This one's going to be about four athletes. Um, so it's a bit of a project breakdown. It's going to be very fast and furious. So bear with me, uh, and it was for a project we did for Nike. And hopefully, hopefully by doing this, I can give you guys a bit of a peek into our creative process, especially, especially at the early stages of a project. So anyway, we got a brief from Nike, and it was more or less this. They wanted four looping animations. Each one of those animations would be both, uh, based on one of their sponsored athletes. So one on Kobe, one on LeBron, one on Kyrie, and one on Kevin Durant. They were going to be vertical format, um, and they were going to be played inside at the Nike Shanghai flagship store, and they were going to be around 25 seconds long, more or less. So we started with storyboards, and here is the storyboards for the Kobe spot we did. Um, this is actually a screenshot from one of our presentations that we sent to the Nike guys as, as we were working with them. When I do storyboards, I try and make as many design decisions as possible and draw as close to the final design style as possible. Um, this, I find this is really helpful because it sets up a really good foundation for the other designers to work from once they jump onto the project. And it's especially useful if you're working with uh, off-site freelancers or something like that. 
it just really speeds up the design process. Um, also, we usually draw around one frame a second when it comes to storyboards. That's not a conscious decision. We don't set out to do that, it just kind of happens. Um, so for this project, we had around 100 storyboard frames all up. And then we move into style frames. And if I just click between the two, you can actually see that um, I didn't depart too far from the sketches that I'd set up. Um, so it made it pretty smooth sailing. And th this is all done in Illustrator as well, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Um, and I usually design around one style frame. Yeah, about one style frame for each storyboard frame. But in fact, with this project, we designed way more. We ended up with about 140 style frames all up for the across the four spots, which is a shitload. Um, then we move into animation. And uh, this was a smooth process, largely due to these amazing animatics. Shout out to Will. <laughs> um, so I mentioned earlier that I try and make as many design decisions as possible when I'm doing the storyboards. Well, we do a similar thing once we get into animatics, right? We try and make as many animation decisions as possible. And you can really see Will is putting a lot of thought into like easing, posing. Um, even some of the cell animation has been roughed out already. And this really speeds up the animation process. So in a nutshell, basically the more polished you make the animatic, um, the more granular and more specific you can get with the storyboards, the smoother the whole animation process is going to be. And here is the final animation for Kobe. So slide six. So slide six is about the, it's a little bit of a, well, it starts off with a little bit of a personal story, but <clears throat> it's about uh, six years treating water. So before Buck, before Giant Ant, I worked at a studio in Wellington in New Zealand, I think Gareth mentioned earlier. Um, but what he didn't mention was that the work wasn't very good. It wasn't the sort of work that you could put in a portfolio or show in a showreel. It was the typical entry-level MoGraph stuff. So I was doing lots of ads selling carpet, lots of ads selling women's clothing, barbecues, and lots of lots of washing machines. Um, so but I was just waiting, waiting, waiting for cool work to come through the door. Uh, and it just didn't really happen, ever. And that was for about, yeah, for six years. So, but then something did happen. I started playing in a death metal band. And, <laughs> and we needed, we, we were playing shows, right? So we needed posters. So I uh, drew the posters and the bands, what happened was the bands that we were playing with, they liked the posters too. So I started drawing posters for them, which led to merchandise, hoodies, t-shirts. I was doing album artwork and music videos and I was finally doing the stuff that I wanted to do. Uh, and it led me to realize three things that if I want to do the work that I want to do, I had to do it after hours. It wasn't going to happen in my day job. Uh, the per this personal work I was doing was helping to uh, develop my skill set. So <clears throat> I was getting better at drawing, getting better at um, using a Wacom tablet, getting better at Photoshop. And it was also helping me to strengthen my portfolio. So I finally had a portfolio I could be proud of. And this is actually something we consider a buck too. So every year, buck does a few passion projects. And we use these passion projects in a similar way to build the Buck portfolio and widen our skill set. So for instance, the first time Buck did a job with puppets, that was an internal project. The first time Buck did a stop motion job, that was an internal project too. And now both of these styles play a huge role in Buck's bag of tricks. So, so to round up, uh, I'll just leave you with a piece of advice that could have saved me six years. Uh, cool work may never just fall on your lap. And sometimes to do cool work, you have to show the world what you want to do first. And here's yeah. number seven. All right, so that's me. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I, it might be me cutting some shapes on the D floor later tonight. <laughs> I, I think it's me in one of Lucas's ads. There's one of those things with air going through, you know, that's at the car yard. The wacky wavy inflatable. The wacky wavy thing. No, this is me 
juggling jobs and resources at work, which is something I do quite a bit these days. Um, so a large part of my job is to, is to quickly decide whether to say yes or no to a job or to a pitch. And so I just want to quickly go through that process with you and, and kind of show you how we, we kind of make that decision. Um, so I'm going to start off by playing you a spot that we recently finished for, with AJF Partnership for Holden. Seven. What's so special about seven? There are seven days of the week, seven wonders of the world, seven continents, seven seas, seven virtues, seven deadly sins, the magnificent seven, secret seven, seven brides for seven brothers, seven years bad luck, seven colours of the rainbow, seven dwarfs, the seven year itch, seventh heaven, and now a fully transferable seven year warranty on every new Holden. But hurry, offer ends soon. Lucky seven, lucky you. See your Holden dealer today. Cool, so that, that script turned up on our doorstep. Um, and it was pretty much as, as you heard it there. So we, we really liked the creative and they came to us with some nice visual reference as well. Um, but the problem was we had no one free at the time. We had one guy who was pitching on a job and the, another part of the problem was that job he was pitching on would have the exact same timings of this. So if they both awarded, they'd both award on the same day and then be executed in the same amount of time. But we still like the creative, so we, we, we were still interested in kind of fleshing it out and seeing if we could make it work. You know, and the sort of questions you ask, ask yourself is, do we, do we put that one artist on both pitches, which is going to decrease the chance of you getting them because the pitches aren't going to be as strong? And what if we get them both? You know, could we even do them both? And that's where we start. We, we jump into a Google Sheet and we start playing with uh, uh, some hypothetical situations and moving these little boxes around. And it's, it's um, you know, we, we, like to, we like our artists to, to not move around too much, you know, it's, we don't want them to um, lose focus and so we prefer them to stay on one job from start to finish. Um, so anyway, back to Holden, they want an answer. Um, we worked out, we went to the Google Doc, we worked out that we couldn't do it. So the next step is to see if we can change the creative to suit our needs. And we do this quite often, you know, usually we'll do this uh, because the budget's too small. So this is what you want and this is what it costs, but how about this, which you can afford, you know? Uh, but this time we were, we were looking at the creative uh, from a different angle because of the short timeline and the, um, the busy office. Because what they wanted to do, they wanted a 30 second spot that was all 3D. Um, and as, as it was talked about before, I think Mike had a slide that was talking about the process of 3, 3D. It's, it's very staggered, right? And you can't really, there's not much crossover. You have to start with design, then modeling, then look dev, then it's, it just goes on and on. Whereas with 2D, you can design it, then animate it. And so we explored the idea of using a mixed media approach. So instead of a 30 second 3D spot, what if it was 15 two second shots? Um, and we'd introduce 2D, we'd introduce stop motion into the mix. And so what this did is it did a few things. It, it allowed us to be able to um, work out a way to actually execute this. And it also gave us an opportunity, it forced us to look outside of our walls and we got to work with Tim, um, Tim Clapham. Uh, which we've been wanting to do for a while. So we got to work with some really cool freelancers. And I think at the end of the day, it actually made for a stronger campaign as well. So, yes, do we take it? Do we not? Yes. As you know, we said yes. So we took it on. We, um, we went into the pitch with a pretty light deck. We had a mood board, a write up on this new direction and some examples of our vignette based work. All right, slide number eight is all about eight rappers. So it's another project breakdown, but this one's a little different. It's not actually an animation, but a poster that we recently finished for a company called Ant Food. Now, for those of you who don't know who Ant Food are, they're a sound design company. Buck works with them a lot. I think we've been working with them for years and years and years. Um, they're amazing musicians. They record everything. They're just, we've got a really good working relationship with these guys. So now back in slide four, I showed you a spot that we did for Nike. Well, originally they didn't have any audio they had because we had no budget for, an au for audio. So what we did was we made a deal with Amfood and we said, look, if you guys design some set, do some sound design for us for free, then we owe you something in the future. And this job was us paying them back. So anyway, Amfood, they uh, came to us with a brief for this poster and the brief was three words long, intergalactic rap battle. <clears throat> So it's a short brief, obviously, but it's also a pretty cool brief. Uh, so Gareth and I, we got to work and we started with some um, concept art. 
we started thinking about like some alien trees, some alien plants, some aliens. We also started thinking about maybe this poster has a bit of a story to it. Maybe this little weird astronaut dude has crash landed on some planet with some crazy jungle and um, the jungle's full of these freaky aliens and plants and this is what we came up with. So you can see there at the bottom the astronaut, he's crash landed, uh, there's all these sort of fucked up aliens around him. But um, the other thing we, we wanted to do is make it feel like a bit like a bad acid trip. So we've used lots of, uh, lots of gradients, like really saturated contrasty colors but what makes this poster really cool is that it's actually a musical poster so printed underneath the illustration is a layer of conductive ink and that conductive ink connects to the circuit board on the side there and that circuit board connects to the little speakers and that's all within the poster so what happens is when you tap the conductive ink it'll trigger a noise so it'll either make a beat uh, one of the aliens will start rapping or um, something else cool will happen and that red button there just stops, stops everything. So unfortunately the posters are still in production. I would have loved to have shown you guys, but um, we do have a little taste of how it works. Hi, what a lovely little place. All the singing creatures put a smile on my face. It's been three days since I crash landed. I'm running out of food and now I'm stranded. Dingle dongle ding dong. Aha! I'm a star, I got mad soul. You're small like a tadpole. tadpole. You wanna act tough, wanna act, say an angle, but say angle, but say. So good. We cannot wait to get those. So good. Um, so number nine. Number nine is all about, I'm going to pick up where Mike left off and talk about work-life balance. Um, maybe we start thinking about it when we get older. I don't know. <laughs> um, so we start at 9 a.m. and we finish at 6 p.m. And I'm going to be honest, we've slipped up a few times over the uh, past couple of years. We've ended up working weekends and working into the night. And I hate it when this happens, and I feel responsible when this happens. So, you know, I do think that we're experienced enough now to, to plan well and avoid these situations, which I do think we do, you know, 99% 9, of the time we're successful in that. When it does happen, we try to learn from it, and we have a debrief, and we pinpoint the problem in areas so that we can eliminate it from happening again in the future. And so what we did, similar to Holden, is we simply changed the creative. So... We, we went back to them with a design style that felt handmade, so it still answered their brief of wanting it to be handmade, but it was made up of, you notice we have some straight lines in there um, that are kind of rendered as if they've been drawn with a pencil, but they would suit um, being built in After Effects. Um, and also we've got some, hatch, some hatched um, out areas that are gonna have some, um, some moving animations in them, like some hatched, some hatched fills. Yeah. Um, so this movie is from about halfway through production and you see here the mix of After Effects with Cell. So anything like a human hand or something organic like the, like the herbs is Cell. And anything with straight lines or a building, that's going to be done in, in After Effects. And then we take all that and this is um, from the final movie and we make it look like it's all coming from the same space with some effects that we applied. And so. We were um, successful, you know, I think for the most part for this job, we walked out the door at uh, 6 p.m. Um, and so, you, like I was saying, like work-life balance is really important to me, probably more so now that I have a family. Um, my time feels more precious than it used to be. So I like to be out the door at 6. But I also acknowledge that I wouldn't be standing here today had I not put in some long hours in the past. Um, so for that reason... I, I don't mind if, if, if people are working late in the office as long as it's their choice, you know. Sometimes we want to just make it a little bit better, sometimes we're learning something new, you know, there's lots of reasons to stay late. So as long as it's a choice, there's another dad joke, it's a choice with me. Um, but my, you know, my advice if you came and talked to me would be to have, have, have some good balance and work really hard during those, during those eight or nine hours at work and then walk out that door. Lucas. All right, slide number 10. This is actually my favorite slide. So back in number six, I talked about something I learned way too late, and that was the power of 
personal work. So for this slide, I wanted to talk about 10 other things that I wish I'd known sooner. So number one, uh, and I think this, this festival is proof of this, that people in the industry are pretty friendly. Like we love talking about design, we love talking about animation, and I usually find that the cost of grabbing someone's attention is usually about as expensive as a beer or a coffee. Uh, number two, it's easier than you think to travel and work. Um, all you need is a laptop and an internet connection, and look, even if you don't work, then at least you had a holiday. Um, three, done is better than perfect. I think this is pretty important for all those perfectionists out there. Um, whatever you're working on, it doesn't need to be perfect, but it does have to be done. Uh, pretty obvious, being good is not as important as being nice, I, but I think that this is import especially important as a freelancer, if you're a freelancer, because no one wants to hire a jerk. Design is subjective, no hard and fast rules, it's just opinions. Uh, music is more than half the mood, so don't let sound design be an afterthought. I think it's too important and deserves a lot of consideration, and it doesn't matter how good your animation is, um, it's always going to be let down by crappy sound design. Shut up more. This is a good one. This is something I'm working on. I need to stop interrupting people. <laughs> I need to listen more and seek to understand people before I make myself understood. Uh, eight, it's okay to say no to work. You know, we're, we're, we're trading time for money. Uh, you'll never get your time back. You can always make more money. Nine, don't let work be the hardest thing you do in the day. This is, this is something I learned recently. So I think it's really important to have challenges outside of work to help give you perspective because at the end of the day, we're just making animation. We're not, we're not saving lives. Uh, and I recently started kickboxing and I noticed that my work problems just evaporate the moment I get punched in the face. And number 10, this is a big part of Buck's DNA. So leave your ego at the door. Don't put your ego in front of your work. And remember that a critique on your work is not a critique on you. Nice. All right, number 11. So um, we have 11 projects on the site from Sydney, which I think is really, really cool. Um, I went through, the, through our server and, and counted all of our jobs that we've worked on, and it's it's a little over a third of the uh, work that we've done since we opened. So what's the other two thirds? Um, <laughs> I'm happy to say that most of it is actually really awesome work, I think, you know, and I think that the, it's just the, the buck bar is just so high that for whatever reason, they don't quite cut the mustard. But I want to cele celebrate some of that work now and give a, li a little bit of daylight. So here's a little showreel of our seconds. Am I not pretty enough? Is my heart too broken? Do I cry too much? Am I too outspoken? Don't I make you laugh? Should I try it harder? Why do you see right through me? <laughs> another another shout out to Will who put that together, um, and the, you know and there's a little bit more, and it's locked in a safe at Buck. Um, it's in tags, it's in house videos, it's sizzle reels, it's favors for clients, it's, it's logos bouncing, and it's sliding transitions, and um, you know we do that stuff too, and it's all it's all super important for us to keep the lights on, and also for us to grow our client relationships, um, and we also use it as a chance to. Give some artists a bit, little bit more responsibility. There, sorry, responsibility than they usually have, so that they can grow as an artist. The important thing for me is the attitude that we put that uh, that goes towards this work. We take it all really seriously, and we make it the best piece that it can be within the limitations. And now Lucas is going to take it to the finish with the final slide. All right, we made it. Last slide, number twelve. Are we, are we doing good for time? Yeah, yeah, all good. we're good. Okay, so 12 is for the 12 full-timers and one intern we have at Buck Sydney. So the team breaks down like this. We have a junior producer, executive producer, we have creative director, art director. We've got six people in the 2D team, one of which lives in London. Uh, we've got two in the 3D team and one 3D intern. Yes. Uh, and I think it goes without saying that staff is the greatest asset of any studio. They create the work and they create the culture of the studio and they make... Buck a fun place to go to every day. 
So even though even though Gareth and I are up here, we are a team and we win together and we fail together. And so I'd like to take a moment to introduce the team. So would you guys mind standing up real quick? <laughs> there they are, that's the team. <laughs> so they're, they're pretty nice people. If you see them around, please feel free to introduce yourself, say hi, network with them, talk with them. Um, yeah, and finally, on behalf of Gareth and myself, I'd just like to thank James and Kim so much for having us. It's been a huge privilege to speak to everyone. I've had lots of fun. I've been pretty nervous, but I think we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I look forward to having a beer with everybody. So, thanks. Thanks,